Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you had a good uh, good day today. It was a good day for me. Back to school tomorrow. Mm. Learning is hard. No, it's not that bad. So I promise you a video, one of the new series I'm going to try out and see how it goes. Um, give me a little PSA, a little warning. This video is going to be full of emotion. Might be hard to watch for some of you. Might be long, probably is. Um... Simply because of what this means to me. Um, chaps. Buy off a rent. Nothing fancy. 20 bucks at the department stores. Drug stores. Um, tell you the truth, it's not even really all that nice. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not anything I'd really wear again. Just to wear. It's, it's something more I just keep around to smell. I don't want to smell it yet. I'll start crying. Um, so, yeah, why is it special to me? Well, it reminds me of my cousin Dave, Davey. And uh, as, I, as I've stated in a video before, I might not go as in-depth in this one, but uh, he, he, he's gone. You know, suicide. Drugs, 32 years old, I believe it was, 31 or 32, just a baby. Gone way too soon. Um, so get this out of the way, guys. If, you, if you're, if you're, uh, there's nothing wrong with having some weed and a couple drinks, chewing on some shrooms, whatever. But if, if you're into, you find yourself into, you know, crack and meth and pain pills and, you know, and you're drinking all the time. Honestly, get help. There's there's help out there, guys. Get help. And I'm not telling anybody how to live their life. I never would do that. But you're hurting yourself. But more importantly, you're hurting everybody else around you. Um, and I said it before and I'll say it again. Don't come at me saying suicide's a coward's way out. It's not a coward's way out. I don't believe that. It's somebody who's fought demons for years, usually decades, and they just can't fight no more. They just, they just can't, you know, they, every, everybody reaches a point where they, for, for anything, where they just, they, they're just done. And people who commit suicide, generally that's it. It's not, they're not thinking straight, obviously. They're not thinking about who they're going to hurt. And who, who's going to miss them? They're, they're actually generally thinking the complete opposite, that they're a burden and people are going to be better off without them. No, no, man, don't, don't, please just honestly get help. I mean, I'm no good to talk to about it, so don't, don't message me about it, but there's professionals out there and if you don't. Talk to a friend, a family member, if you're somebody at work, if you're not comfortable with that. Like I said, there's professionals out there. You can free 1-800 numbers. And, uh, I don't know about in the States, but in Canada, you can get in for mental health in certain places for free. And you can talk to a specialist. And yeah, get help, guys. Get help. Just, yeah, that's out of the way now. I just want to get that out of the way. You're not, you're not doing anybody any favors, honestly, guys. Get help. I love you to death. I love it. I mean, what a horrible thing, honestly. But I understand it. I do. I understand that you've just, somebody's fought so much and so long and so hard. and They just can't fight anymore. It's not a coward's way out. It's, if anything, it's, it might be the complete opposite. Somebody who's fought like that and just, yeah. Anyway, he's gone. And that's why it's special to me. Um, it's the reason I wear this hat when I talk about this one. I'm um, not that I had this hat when we were, because we were only 12, 13, 14 years old, guys, when we were started really hanging out. And he was my best friend for a few years. 
And he was always my cousin. He was always a friend, but he was my best friend for a few years, like attached at the hip. Um, but this hat reminds me of the style of the hat that we would wear back then. Um, beat up, old, dirty. Um, the dirtier, the more beat up the hat was, the better. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you, you'd get a new hat and you'd wash it half a dozen times and run it through the dryer half a dozen times and then wet it and wear it and wet it and wear it and wet it and wear it. And you'd take it outside and throw it around the ground, kick it, step on it, run it over. <laughs> I mean razor blades to it and everything just to get it to look like it it you you want it was funny because your outfits were like lacoste and polo shirts and you know 50 60 70 80 dollar jeans 150 200 dollar pair of shoes or sneakers or boots and and you had this hat on that you look like you you wrestled the mum for or you you gave a homeless guy a sandwich for you know you found it on the side of the road train track somewhere it was it was funny but i mean Fashion's funny. I mean, fashion is funny. Anyway, that's how you wore a hat back in the 90s, the early 90s. Um, yeah, so kind of reminds me of him. Um, and the reason it was special to me is I was a short, dumpy, rumpy, fat, round little guy. Um, like I said, not the sexual beast you see before you today. Ow, I just, just did a workout not too long ago. I'm sore, I'm getting old. My back's killing me, my biceps killing me, my, my, my forearm's killing me. Uh, you know, maybe we gotta lighten up the weight a little bit. I'm not 20 years old anymore. Um, but yeah, um, and I was just socially awkward. Didn't know how to talk to girls, didn't know how to do any of that stuff. Not that I still do, I mean, what guy really knows how to talk to women? Women scare us. <laughs> Honestly, ladies, you scare the shit out of us. And you always will. Um, and no, we don't know what we did. We don't know what you're thinking. We don't know what you want to eat. Just tell us. <laughs> Just tell us. If you're mad, tell us why. If you're thinking about doing something, tell us what it is. You want to go out and eat? Tell us where you want to go. We don't know. Shut up and show us your boobs. That's what we want. Make us a sandwich topless. <laughs> just kidding, ladies. Just kidding. <laughs> um, just trying to bring a little levity into this because it's it's deep, it's dark, it's heavy. Um, so yeah, anyway, he took this bulbous piece of clay with no fashion sense, like I said. Nothing. And he helped me help me lose a few pounds by teaching me to dance. He taught me to dance. He was a good dancer, believe it or not. And he taught me to dance. And then I got more into dancing and did dancing, you know, not professionally or anything, but got trained by professionals for football to keep myself, like, eh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he was the genesis of that. He taught me to dance and go to dances. And he taught me, uh, How to talk to girls, and he got me in with the cool, cr the cool crew. You know what I mean. And uh, fortunately, got me doing a couple other things: drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes, and drinking beer every now and then. We could steal a few from from his old man. But it, <laughs> holy goodness, I went down the wrong pipe. But you know, whatever. <laughs> And I remember this was his cologne of choice. So it became my cologne of choice. All right, here we go. Already well enough. I, I smell it and I want to cry. But I also want to smile. You know? Because of the good times we had, and I remember a couple of them, and one of them was, I think I talked about it in my other video, the day we, it was the last like week of school or whatever, a couple of days of school, and we decided just to take the morning off and walk to school, and we were a good half hour walk away from school at least, not more, 
maybe an hour. I don't, I can't remember, but we stopped at the mall when the mall still had a smoking area and we sat in the smoking area and had a couple cigarettes and waited till after lunch and went back to school. And I remember walking in and the teacher saying, well, where were you guys in the morning? And Dave was like, we were sick. Sick for what? We were sick at school. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are they going to do? It's a couple days left. Kick you out? No. So, anyway, we said, well, you might as well leave because I'm not marking you here for the rest of the day. He said, all right, see you later. And we left. I mean, that was just the way Davey was. He was a smaller fella. He was, you know, if he was five feet tall, he was an inch. And if he was 150 pounds, he was a, an ounce. And But he had a little mouth on him. I was always the one that got in the fights because of him. I, he'd, get, he'd get lipping off at somebody and come running to me, and then I'd have to fucking throw down because I was a pretty good little little scrapper. And uh, so, yeah, God love him for that, too. Um, but that walk to school that day, I think I talked about it, was just an incredible experience, you know? It was running into a few people who were doing the same thing, you know, that we were in school with and hanging out and sitting on the side of the road and smoking cigarettes and talking and, you know, talking about what we we're going to do that weekend and, you know, should we go to school the rest of the day or should we know we'll go to lunch because we just want to get the bus home anyway, <laughs> which we didn't end up doing because we left school. <laughs> so... And every time I, I smell that cologne, I think of that and I think of sitting on the side of the school steps when a day when you were young and a day would last forever in a good way. You know, you just, everything was new. Like I said, just sitting there chilling with your homies was just a new experience and, and you'll never have those days. You can try to force days like that and force feelings like that, but you'll never have them again. So hold on to them if you have them. It's them them child and young adult teen and young adult memories. Guys, they never, you never can recapture them. You can try to manufacture it, but you never will. So hold on to them memories if you got any. Hold on to the memories of somebody who's special to you. I didn't know how special he was to me until... And, and how could you? How could you, honestly? You know, he was just uh, another cousin at the end of the day and a friend that I used to hang around with religiously for, for a few years. But you grow apart, you know, you grow up. And, and he started getting into a bad crowd relatively early. Like, uh, you know, by the end of junior high, the start of high school, he was into the the drinking and the drug crowd, you know, because he thought it was cool. And to a 15-year-old, I guess it is, but it really wasn't to me. I was more, got into more of the, the sports, you know, the football, the rugby, the wrestling, the boxing. I got more into that. And I, I mean, did I drink and smoke some dope? Of course. But... Yeah, the, the feelings, and, and I'll never forget. It was late at night when it happened, but I got, my mom told me the next morning, and there was, I knew there was something up that night. I just didn't feel right. I don't, I'm not a big believer in supernatural stuff. I mean, you know, I think every, almost 99% of everything has an explanation, but that night was weird. I was just restless. Could have been just that I was restless, yeah. But just seemed, in hindsight now, it seemed kind of, I mean, I wish he had called me. I mean, I know we hadn't been hanging out for a long time, but we were still family. I still loved him, and he still loved me. I wish he had called me. You know, I don't know if I would have said anything. I Maybe I could have went over. I would definitely went over. And, uh, He was a couple years older than me still, so, but still, I mean, I would have went over. <sighs> you know, just, why didn't he call? 
six little digits, man. Just six little digits. So yeah, that's why it's special to me, guys. Um, and I'll, I'll always have it. I'll never be without it. I'll probably never wear it again, like I said. It's not something I'm going to wear. Um, simply because I don't think I could. But. I miss them. I do. I know it sounds funny. But I keep thinking where we'd be today. This is almost. You know, this is 20 years ago. Pretty much. I know it's not that long ago. 15 years ago. Wearing that cologne was 30 years ago, you know? In 15 years, where we'd be now, would if we had gotten straight, you know, would we be... I, I'd almost guarantee you we'd be hanging out again. Chilling out, you know? Because I'd be perfect for somebody who's in recovery like that. Because you're in recovery your whole life. Because I will never... You'd never come over to my house to get dr high and drunk. You know what I mean? You'd come over to my house. I wouldn't even have to let you have beer. Not because I'm against beer, but if you're a recovering alcoholic and drug addict, there's not going to be any drugs or alcohol in my house for you other than caffeine and nicotine. And we could, we, I know we would be sitting on the deck in the summertime barbecue and having coffee and, and cigarettes and talking about life and, and reminiscing. Hey man, remember that time we cuffed school? We cuffed school a few times. Remember one time we, we I got grounded because my marks. When I started hanging out with him, my marks really went like, like failing. So I got grounded, and I wasn't allowed out after schools and on the weekends. So my marks came back up. Well, he got the bright idea, and it sounded good to me at the time. Well. Like I said, we're half hour, an hour away from home. Well, let's just walk home and go the long way. I figured, yeah, I can't get in trouble for that. I'm not out doing anything. I'm just walking home from school. I'm not out hanging around. So like three and a half hours later, I come strolling into the door and there's mom. Where were you? Well, you see, we missed the bus. How do you miss the bus? It waits for you. Oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go to your room. Okay. It was sound like a good idea at the time, though. Come on now. 13-year-old logic. Mm, yeah, that's right. Mom can't be mad. No, mom was mad. And yeah, I was in my room for a couple of days. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're, they're funny memories when you look back at them, and I have great memories with them. Like I said, girls and dances, and we were so close, we dressed the same, like, came up, hammer pants, guys, remember, okay, it's like 1992, <laughs> and the hammer pants, and these shirts, and I bought white hammer pants. No, I had black hammer pants. He bought white hammer pants or vice versa. It doesn't matter. And I had a white shirt or a black shirt. I can't remember with a white hood. And he had the vice versa. His was a white shirt with a black hood. And we'd wear like, we'd, we'd synchronize our clothes and stuff like that. Silly stuff. I know, but come on now. We thought we were so cool. And we did all right with the girls. He did better than I did because I was still kind of dumpy and awkward, but. I did a lot better than I should have. And that's all because of him. And, uh... Yeah, so that's the story, guys. I didn't, I'm not going to go super in-depth with it. That's it. I said, sorry, it's a long video, but it had to be. And this is episode one of story time. A lot more of them are going to be a lot more uplifting than this. So don't think they're all going to be downers. There's going to be a few downers, but... Because emotion... Scent and emotion go together. It doesn't always have to be a good scent emotion it can be a bad emotion but this is like a combination like i said i have so many good memories with them i think about them and i smile then i want to cry you know then i wish he was here then i understand why he's gone then i don't understand why he's gone it's just a big bag of hodgepodge of emotions and memories and so yeah guys i hope you liked it this is the first episode tell me what you think um was do you want to see more episodes of me? Because a lot of them are going to be happy memories. Don't get me wrong. 
um, just let me know. All right, guys. Peace, love, be good to each other.